Welcome to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, have Coriander with me and special guest Angela returning with us to talk about Final Destination 2. How's it going, ladies? Fabulous. Good. Yeah, good. How are you? I'm, I'm good. This is going to be fun. Yeah. We're heading into the sequel. And uh, yeah, I'm ready to do this. Um, and we're continuing our series review on Final Destination with Final Destination 2. And look, let me just tell you something uh, from the opening montage. That was that was the thing that stuck in my mind for so long. I was mm -hmm. saying that to you, Coriander, and I was saying that to Angel before we went live. That pile up on the highway. I mean, to this day, I still <laughs> think about that whenever I'm behind a big truck or a truck with logs on it. That's Just how you before go real we... fast. It... Okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> To pass them? Hell yeah. Well, that's true. I'm not going to stay I, behind one. And I do. I do pass them. Real exactly. quick before we, we begin, um, let me just get a, a take on what you guys think of that opening scene, because obviously that's what starts everything. I'll, I'll start with you, Coriander, and then we'll go to Angela. What did you think of that scene for the disaster? It was really good, the, that opening scene. I mean, okay. when you're on a highway and yeah, you're in a pile up, literally, like those kids in the bus were yelling, pile up. Right. Yeah. You're, you're, you're in for a ride. And you really are. Yeah, it was oh crazy. Gosh. It's I scary agree. to think that that could happen. And yeah. Yeah. It was, it was intense. Absolutely. Absolutely. How about you, Angela? I loved all the itty bitty details, like what's going to go wrong? Because there were so many opportunities. You've got the, the, truck driver who's drinking but driving the drink responsibility truck or responsible truck you've got the coffee spilling like there's so many moments you're like who's gonna screw this up who's gonna start <laughs> this and it right. just kept going until it happened because there were so many times and you're just like ah yes really I agree. well shot edited and choreographed scene like that or sequence we'll say sequence mm. yeah i agree i mean rewatching it um i was really amazed how well it was crafted because like you said it's edited really well this movie is obviously from 2003 and yeah it really ramps up that tension throughout until those logs come off of the truck it's crazy um real quick we'll see who's in the chat uh before we get going proper uh we've got saharam's in the chat with some thumbs up we've got neil in the chat with this is the best opening scene ever yeah, man, it was it was crazy. Uh, my man Ginger Ninja's in the chat saying hey or saying hi everyone. What's going on, man? Uh, and Neil saying every time I come up mm -hmm. on a log truck, it makes me glad I drive a Camaro. No problem, get around it quick, quickly. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's a good, good one. I like Can I that. Can I make a confession here? Sure. Last Thursday, I was driving. And I just watched the first one for preparation of last week. And there was the truck with the logs as I was driving home. And I was like, are you kidding me? I wow. know what's next. I know what's next. And I was like, I don't like this. And it was a one lane road. So I couldn't get around it the entire time. I'm like, I don't want to be Final Destination 2 before I watch it. Right. Oh, my gosh. That must have I felt weird. I appreciate that. Wow. All right. Yeah, that would have that would have been freaking me out for sure. Uh, David's in the chat saying in the original, the scene where the plane goes kaboom is very similar to the scene in the Twilight Zone episode two, where that the end, the plane takes off and then right in the middle, it goes kaboom. Oh, I don't remember that Twilight Zone episode. I love the Twilight Zone, though. I got to get back into that series because there were some gems. There really was. All right, guys, we're going to get finished getting set up and give people a chance to uh, come into the chat if they choose to do so. So sit back, relax. You know what time. Coriander, let's let's start this thing off. When you first saw this movie, and I know you've seen it a few times, but when you first saw it, what were your thoughts in the beginning as we, you know, we meet uh, Kimberly and her friends and they're obviously going on a trip and, you know, they just seem like regular young kids doing their thing. And this is before they even get on that dangerous highway to hell. Yeah, I mean, it looked like they were gonna have a good time. They picked up mm -hmm. a couple of guys and one of them had a great big bag of weed and yeah. <laughs> right, this guy, thing, this guy know, right here. Trip. 
right? <laughs> so yeah, I he didn't mind, you know. <laughs> yeah, I didn't mind this this group of characters that you're meeting right now. Right, right. How about you, Angela? When you saw what's, what what was happening, all the different signs. Were there any signs that stuck out to you the most? Um, I think I have to go back to it earlier when I said the drink responsibly and he's drinking and driving. Like it's yes. there's just so much little ironic comedy throughout the entire sequence, but that one will always stand out to me because it's like just because you drive a truck that says drive safely doesn't mean you're going to. <laughs> right. Absolutely. I mean, oh, and, <laughs> yeah, this was the one that got me, guys, because, mm -hmm. you know, Kimberly seems to be the type of person young person that you know she's she's gonna have a good time but she's fairly responsible and she's looking around and like you said angela she sees the you know drink responsibly guy and you know you got like coriander was saying her friends the guy in the back with the weed and they're just carefree but she's seeing these different things she hears highway to hell by acdc and it just makes mm -hmm. her start thinking and when you see this kid yeah. with the two toy vehicles and it was like, wow, if that's not irony in your face, I don't know. Especially because what, what their is. truck was red. So, right, exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, but they're driving along and we start to see some of the other characters um, in this thing, Coriander. And the other thing that I noticed too is this cop, and, and he was a pretty good character, but when he was driving right behind the truck, I mean, it's rainy out and all of that. I would have been nervous just just like that anyways you know what i'm saying what were you thinking as as yeah. that log just broke apart and came off <clears throat> well it's funny too because you could see that there was a chain dragging yes so you would have thought being a cop he would have pulled him over and said hey you got a chain dragon you might want to check your shit right. but instead no i mean he was the first one to get it the log snapped He's like right. spilt his coffee, looks up, and the friggin' log smashes through the car, and there he goes. Oh man, and that was that was a that great was scene. rough. Yeah, man, yeah, you talk about some gore, man. Like wow, yeah. uh, Ginger Ninja saying, "Love the opening scene of Final Destination too, but it's not my favorite death scene in this movie." Oh, you'll have to let us yeah. know. All right, <laughs> Lamar is in the chat. What's going on, man? Nice to see you. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> He's feeling good. Nice. <laughs> Saying margaritas and pot, laugh out loud. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Ginger Ninja saying, I don't want to spoil it, but it's a two for one kill scene. Oh, okay. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> we got Joseph, too, in the chat. Hey, Nightwatch. Love you guys. Hello. Thank God it's Friday. <laughs> right? Right. Nice. Um, but yeah, you know, let let's 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 go beyond that. Um, Angela, what were you thinking once everything started to go downhill for all these guys? Were there any particular um, death scenes or deaths in this highway crash that really got to you, or you thought were notable? <laughs> I I don't know if I would say any of the deaths were necessarily noticeable i do have to play off of last week when we were talking about effects i kept going wow how did the last effects stand up so well and this one's not <laughs> i think the explosions were a bit too there was too many explosions to make it realistic i don't know uh -huh. but it definitely yeah. stood out that the effects were not as good as the last one even though this is a new newer still pretty old Right. Yeah. I mean, this one had a little bit of a bigger budget. It had $26 million budget where the other one mm -hmm. I think was like 23 or whatever. Um, so, but yeah, I, I kind of agree with you on that because there were a couple of moments where things were just, as soon as they touched, they were like, boom, 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 you know, and it was kind of like, mm, I don't know. Well, yeah. some of those cars back then, I mean, some of those cars would do that. If you mm. I guess I don't know enough crash about in, cars. Dude. <laughs> hmm. Well, I mean, well, you know, I put it this way: they were definitely setting this up to be a huge ash, freak, mm -hmm. huge ash, freaking disaster. That's for sure. I mean, there's no doubt about that. Like everybody was biting the bullet. They even had that scene where, when Kimberly, her her vehicle toppled over, and you could mm -hmm. see her friend's head out of the sunroof because her blonde hair was flinging around. I was yeah. like, wow, it was just, you know. So it definitely was was over the top, of course. You know, in real crashes, you know, it's very horrific anyways. But we yeah. realized that this I mean, is all. No, yeah. go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I had a friend who actually died in a car accident. It was mm -hmm. raining. She didn't wear a seatbelt. 
she got mm. ejected and was killed. Oh, so, yeah. Sad. I'm sorry to hear that. That is sad. Yeah. I'm sorry to hear that too. Yeah, uh, it's just crazy. But yeah, it's it's freaky. Yeah. Because they, they, they choo they're choosing up. things. Buckle yeah, up. and they're, they're picking things that, you know, just life incidences that can mm -hmm. kill you. And that's yeah. what makes these movies that much oh, yeah. more. Just because, yeah, it's it could happen. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, right from the beginning, first of all, when you see that it's, it's a rainy uh, a rainy day or a rainy highway, I mean, you're already talking about the possibility of hydroplaning and skidding and so forth. And, you know, that was crazy in and of itself. And of course, you know, when you see Eugene on his motorcycle and he's going like a buck 50, you oh know, it's God, like, like, you're so yeah. stupid. You know what movie you know? you're in? <laughs> right. You and know, every but time I, mean, I see that in real life, I'm like, you clearly don't watch horror movies, sir. Or man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And people really do do that. So it's, they you know, do. like, you like said, I have another horrific story of <laughs> that happened with the guy on a motorcycle. My ex, he said he was one of his coworkers was on his way home from work. There was a motorcycle accident where the dude got hit and he was like almost in half. The guy oh, like dude. walked up and covered him with his coat. Yeah, there was no way wow. that he could save. He was hoping that, yeah, he could do something to save the guy, but there was nothing that could happen. Oh, so wow. for those That's people crazy. who are on motorcycles who drive like Eugene, you guys are crazy because you're risking right. your lives. And, right. Damn, Especially in no that way. weather. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Neil saying, uh, dude was driving a firebird. Of course, it's going to explode. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> right? <laughs> Good one. Yeah. Phil's in the chat. Phil saying, hey, there are fans with your buddy Phil Hello. here texting you from behind a log truck. Mm -hmm. Phil, come on. Oh, you, know no. not, you know you're not doing that. <laughs> you're smarter than that. So anyways, guys, but we, we realized that this is all a, a premonition that Kimberly is having. And she pulls over. She stops traffic before they can even come off of the off ramp. And that's when things really I love get how really... she did that. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and I think that showed her character a little bit because mm -hmm. she could have easily just pulled over to the right and let people go, right? But she intentionally blocked the path of all the cars. There were like what nine, ten cars behind her. And at least um, so it was pretty busy. Yeah. And she's explaining to the officer, to uh, Officer uh Berg or whatever, hey I just had a, a vision. There's going to be a huge pileup and so forth and so forth. Of course, he doesn't believe her. He's trying to figure out what the hell's going on. And Coriander, like you said, <laughs> the friends in the back, they've got the weed and they're trying to hide it and all that type of stuff. But th this is what makes it so horrific is that she's explaining it to him. And as, while she's explaining it to him, the pileup happens. You know, <laughs> she sees the log truck go right past them and then it happens. And, and I just wanted to say this part and then I'm, I'm going to pass it on to you coriander and angela but she's awestruck that it really happened right and you as the viewer you're like holy crap that's where it happened and when i first saw this movie in my mind i was playing out the bits that she showed and then all of a sudden the movie just hits you in the gut because he pushes her out of the way to save her and her friends mm. get creamed like so that was a death that kind of came and it, it really struck me uh coriander yeah did, did you see that one coming coriander or what'd you think of how that happened yeah no that was obviously shocking because when you know she had her vision you didn't think it was that close to the off-ramp that it all took place it mm -hmm. seemed like it right. was like farther down the road mm -hmm. so yes yeah the fact that they were so close i mean how could you not almost be involved in a pileup on a highway? You know, mm -hmm. that's going to, that could stretch for miles. So right. yeah, that, that was crazy. Yeah. And you felt bad because you're like, holy shit, there goes all of her buddies. Yeah. 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 They were yeah. gone. Yeah. yeah. And she, crazy. she, he, he barely got her out of the way, <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, Phil saying really love the guy who won the lottery. He goes through so much. And then finally the fire escape <laughs> ladder gets him. I didn't, see that coming oh geez phil come on man <laughs> and we got mr bones in the chat saying what's up, what's up what's going on man nice to have you um but angela um i'll let you take it from here the story obviously kind of goes into familiar territory like the first movie where mm -hmm. the survivors are ga gathered up and questioned by the police and so forth you know what were your thoughts as far as how, how this movie was going especially compared to the first one 
I thought her friends getting killed was actually a really brilliant twist and change from the first one because you didn't see it coming. You Good were like, point. they're all going to survive. We're going to watch them all go through this. It had been so long since I'd seen this one. It was like watching it for the first time again, like the last one. Mm -hmm. uh, so I thought that was a really brilliant choice to just kill them off and then put these strangers into this situation. Where it's like, I don't know you. Are you mm -hmm. crazy? Are you schizophrenic? Do you have something going on? Or do you need attention? Are you making this up? Like right. all these things, like these strangers are coming together, forced together in essence, and they're figuring it out. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's been yeah. a year. None of them were involved with the last movie. So it's it mm -hmm. was a really good startup for a sequel. Yeah, that was a little bit of a twist. Coriander, mm -hmm. wh what did you think of that? And what did you think of some of the characters, you know, of these survivors and how that all started to play out? I mean, yeah, it it's just, you know, that like we all say, it's almost like the first, you know, they're at the police station trying to figure out, you know, what the hell's going down. People leave mm -hmm. and yeah, they start once that dude who, you know, died from the lottery, that's when Kimberly's thinking, holy shit, you know, this could be, yeah, this could be something. And she goes and of course he's clear and yeah, I mean, then it all really begins. Yeah. And I thought that that, that, that was kind of an interesting part too, because, you know, the one thing that this movie did that, that I really enjoyed was, um, you know, you have these strangers that are brought together and they kind of have to work together or it's just the fact that they are working together. And so that's a little bit different than the first movie. But the other thing is what you just said, Coriander, is that we have a returning person from the first mm -hmm. movie with Ali Lauder's clear um, being in the movie, which when I first saw this movie, I was like, oh, man, that's cool. You know, she did survive and so forth and so forth. And she's in a padded room. I mean, she survived the last movie, but she's in a padded room because she's so afraid of death getting her. And we find out that how could she not be? Right. I and we find be. we find that Alex's character, uh, Devin Sawa's character, Alex from the first movie, died in a freak accident accident mm -hmm. with a brick that fell and hit him on his head and killed him. And of course, by the way, and before I pass it back to you guys, the reason they did that is because Devin Sawa did not. Uh, agreed to return to this movie originally too Alex bad. huh I said that's too bad I would have liked to see yeah. him come back into this one me too I would have too but he he decided not to do it um the original idea was to have Alex and clear come back into this movie and help this new group but it didn't happen that way but anyways but I think uh, having Corey... one of them was a better choice though it makes well, it yeah. the the finality of it like the seriousness of it even more like yeah. What are the statistical probability of both of them surviving a whole year? Right. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I I agree. And, and plus, I loved Alex's character. Don't get me wrong. I loved his character. Right. But it also put the focus, you know, on clear and it made this, mm -hmm. I think it made the movie, it was leaner and it, it made, you know, it wasn't as complicated. You know what I'm saying? Because obviously if both of them were there, they'd both be talking about, hey, read the signs and all that type of stuff. So I agree. It worked out probably for the best. Um but what did you, and I'll throw it to you, Coriander, what did you think of Clear coming back? Um, and what did you think of her being in the padded room and all that type of stuff? I mean, like I said, after seeing all your buddies die, you know, mm -hmm. it, I would probably do the same thing, you know, because <laughs> right. that's like the safest thing. You don't have to worry about anything. You don't have to mm -hmm. tape things down or lock things right. up or so that was smart on her part, <clears throat> but a bummer because who wants to live like that? I would. Yeah, yeah. She even but. said that. She she said, "I beat it. Look at mm -hmm. look around you. How did I beat it? You know." Yeah. Um, how, but how about I you, thought Angela? she was. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, finish. You finish, Coriander. Oh, well, no. I was just gonna say I thought that she was yeah an, a good addition to these guys because mm -hmm. she let them know that yeah death has a design and. If you cheat it, there's always, you know, you can find a way to beat it. You know what I mean? So Right. Yeah. Right. And of course they go back to Tony Todd. So that was always <laughs> Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. How about you, Angela? What did you what did you think of Clear and how that was all set up as her being the returning character and kind of leading these guys? I wanna know how 
she got to the point where she could control everything so much in an asylum like that's 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 not true that doesn't happen they control you even if you're there voluntarily you don't get any amount of control i want to know what she did how she said it how she proved it for them Good to point. give her that level of control like i love it yeah i want to know how i want the backstory to that i just want a little short <laughs> that conversation with the therapist uh, that would have been interesting I, to see that. <laughs> I, I like that it transitioned from the last one where she started to see the signs more. So mm -hmm. it made it really legit to me that she could be this person to pass on the information and share what she's learned in the way that the story or the, the dialogue had that happen. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Neil saying one of the things this series does well is uh, fake you out even though you're familiar with the concept. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with that. Yeah, it keeps you on the edge of your seat. It really, really does. Um, let's see. Um, <laughs> Mr. Bones saying, ain't been here five minutes and you guys are making me want to rewatch this series. <laughs> that's good. Do it with us. That's, yeah, that's, what, that's what we hope to do. <laughs> oh, too funny. And we got Patrick's in the chat. We've got Waffles. Waffles is in the chat. What's going on, guys? Hey. Um, <laughs> Phil saying, funny, the original is called The Final Destination, yet now there's five of them, soon to be six, worse than the, the share retirement tours. <laughs> are they really making a sixth one? <laughs> they are. Hmm. Yeah. Thanks to Google. Yeah. They are. They really are. Uh, Ginger Ninja saying, uh, Devin Sawa did such a good job in the first one. I agree. I, I really, I really agree. He was good. Um, and we got DMC saying, "Hey, Knight, Morbid, and Coriander, thanks for dropping your latest cooking video, Coriander. This was a great <laughs> sequel. <laughs> yeah, it was. It really, really was. But as we as we move forward, and Clear is kind of, you know, just, you know, doing her solitary thing. Let's just go to what was the next big thing. The next big death was uh, Evan." And he had just won the lottery. Yeah. And he goes to oh, his apartment. Man. And holy shit, man. He must have <laughs> dodged death like eight times. Honestly, you know I don't know how this cat's still alive, honestly. Right? Man. Ditto. Like he... Ditto. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> the minute he walks on screen, I'm like, what? You just got that Mac. I remember how much those were way back in the day. What are you doing right. carrying it with all this other shit? Like, that's your your baby. You carry yes. that yourself. You get yeah. a friend to help you. And if that friend drops it, even though you won the lottery, that friend is buying it again. Right? I mean, he's almost <laughs> tripping up the stairs. You know, he's he's tripping over toys in the hallway and he's he's like every it was just funny because it was like every couple seconds he was dodging like a big mm -hmm. accident. But of course, and I will say that this about the movie, and then I'll throw it to you, Coriander, it really showed how death was very persistent, kind of like that first death in the first movie, mm -hmm. um, with Alex's best friend, how he avoided or, or and also Mrs. Luton, how she avoided a couple things, but it finally just got her and got her and got her. Yeah, it's you know? almost like these deaths, you know, you cheated your first death, which mm -hmm. probably would have been a lot quicker, you know, mm -hmm. and maybe not as scary than the second time around. Because, right. Yeah. I mean, he had so many times. Yeah. Before that fire escape got a bit. Yeah. Yeah, Can man. Can ask Corey Anders, well, he's not this lucky. compares to your, your favorite from Destination 1, out of these two, which one is your favorite death? Ooh, out of like everyone? No, out of this specific this specific one and then the De final destination one, you chose the first death with the shower. Yeah. What is your, your favorite out of these two? Oh, okay. You know, I still <laughs> think the shower one is mm -hmm. is a lot more traumatic because he was struggling for quite a while and trying yeah. to fight this. And that that was just yeah. I mm -hmm. think that one is still my favorite. Yeah. It was hard to watch too, man. Oh, like it, it really was. You felt so bad for this guy cuz you yeah. could see like he knew it was up and he yeah. tried. So, Ugh, yeah. just thinking about it. Oh, yeah. But Sorry, did not mean to do that. <laughs> no, that's okay. No. <laughs> um but with this death, you know, like I said, he just kept avoiding stuff. He got his hand stuck down in the in the uh garbage disposal. Ooh, don't remind the fire me. Fire starting. 
Yeah, Good that fire night. scene. I mean, come on, when you're spilling oil everywhere and then mm -hmm. you're being stupid enough to use a towel to swap at it when you're stuck. I right. Mean, and he had all those boxes <laughs> on the floor. It's yes. like, dude, you should have left it alone. Pulled yes. your arm out and that whole huge fire wouldn't have started or the fire would have started, but not as bad. Mm. So, yeah. <clears throat> but did you guys see the foreshadowing on his refrigerator? Because he had, you remember those yeah. magnets, those letter magnets? Well, on yep. the side of his refrigerator, he had the letters H-E-Y-E. -E, and then as he was spilling the oil on his stove, the H fell down into one of his boxes of food. And all that was left was yeah, the E-Y-E -E for I. And it ended up in the microwave. Yes. Yeah. It yes, was so painful right? to watch. I'm like, ah, it that was. was so wrong. It was bad, yeah. man. Uh, Anthony's in the chat, too, saying, I've not seen this one since I was a junior in high school. Yeah, man, you gotta <laughs> revisit it, man. It was, yeah. it was, it was a good time. Mister Bone yeah. saying, "My wife is afraid to be behind a logger truck because of these movies." <laughs> That's the point we were trying to make. Uh, you these know what movies... scene I always think of too is with a logger scene is in National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, right? right when he's right. cruising and he goes, goes underneath. right underneath the huge truck. Oh. Yeah, right. That oh was my good. god. That was... <laughs> yeah. Patrick says, uh, Keegan Connor Tracy's PVC pipe through the head was brutal. Yeah, it was, man. Yeah. <laughs> Ginger Ninja saying my favorite, too. But anyways, yeah, I agree. That was brutal, too. But, you know, when Evan, first of all, he 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 gets out of his house barely. Because as soon as he gets onto the fire escape, this huge explosion, another one of these huge explosions, Angela. <laughs> right? Like, boom, like like a, like a World War Three, mm -hmm. And then he's on the ladder, and he's trying to get it to move because it's stuck. It finally drops down. He falls off of it and catches himself. Look like, on that hey, spaghetti. Did it. If fine. he yeah. didn't, yeah. If he didn't throw out that spaghetti, and you know when he was cleaning out his pan, he wouldn't right. have slipped on that shit. And right. fucking, that's what killed him was that spaghetti. Well, well, you know what's funny though, and I know I keep going back and forth. I want to finish this death up, but it really shows you how. That's true. If he didn't throw out the spaghetti, but death was working in phases anyways. Like, you know, he could have yeah. died with the microwave explosion. He could have died, yeah. you know, when his hand was stuck, when the fire started, when he first tried to get out of the window. Because remember, the windows shut on them. They're on their own because yeah, he had the windows he got open. out of the car and went up the steps to begin with. Well, yeah, going up the steps, <laughs> slipping on toys. So it's like death was just like, you know, round after yeah. round, like I'm going to get you sooner or mm -hmm. later. And eventually, yeah. like you said, he slipped on the spaghetti. But then he falls. And you. Th and first I was thinking when I first saw the movie, I thought he was going to you know, die from mm -hmm. head trauma or something. But he's alive and he kind of takes a breath. Then the ladder comes right here and he takes a breath. And it's funny because the way they edited it was great because it gives the audience just enough time, like that full like second and a half to be like, OK. And then boom, it just goes mm -hmm. right into his eye. I'm telling you, it was a rough death. <laughs> it was rough. <laughs> but but anyways, you know, after that, you 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 literally have the team coming together because now you have clear that is joining uh, Kimberly and uh, and the officer. And it's pretty much their show from here on out. They're they're like the trio leading this thing. And like you said, Coriander, there's one person that they got to go visit. You guys know who they got to go visit. What did both of you guys, what did you guys think? I'll start with you, Angela. What did you think of the scene where they go and visit Tony Todd? It didn't feel like the same character. There was something. I don't, different. I, it was way too different. It didn't feel this like the same character. And it almost took me out of the movie. And I was so disappointed because I love Tony Todd. Like we all stand mm -hmm. for Tony Todd, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, it just didn't. It didn't flow or jive as well. Like they they pushed it just a little bit too far with everything, and they should have held back, hmm. mm -hmm. even just okay. a little bit. Okay. It was my least favorite scene of the entire movie. Oh, okay. Hot take. All right. Which is a lot to say. Yeah, yeah. Just don't don't come for me. <laughs> don't cancel <laughs> no, me. <stop. laughs> Nobody's gonna do that. Well, no, but you know, I I, I know what I know what you mean. I'll, I'll I'll say my part in a second. But Coriander, how about you? What did you think of that scene? How did it go for you? You know, I I didn't mind 
the scene. You know, I just like hearing Tony Todd and mm -hmm. what he's got to say. You know, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I just okay. stand Tony Todd. Yeah, You're just prove it. Stand him. Well. You know, for me, when I saw it, the one thing I will say is that the way it happened, like, you know, they go into the into the uh, the morgue or whatever. And of course, Clear knows him. And, and they had a little bit of a it, the, the coolest part was when he was just like clear, you know, and it was kind of like, OK, creepy, you know, and then it did seem like he played the character a little bit differently or maybe they wrote it, you know, wrote him differently. Um, Could be direction, but, too, just to throw that out there. Yeah. Yeah, it, it could be. And and it just seemed like when he was talking about death, it was just a different vibe that he had. Like in the first movie, he seemed more like I, I don't know. I, I know I know what you mean, Angela, but it was a little bit different. I still enjoyed it. Me personally, I still enjoyed it. But I will say this, I think the one mistake that they had in these movies is I think that he should have been in all of them, which he wasn't. He was in most of them. But also I think his role should have been a little bit bigger. I know that would have been tough because he was always, you know, at the morgue and so forth. But it just felt like as soon as you got invested in him or interested in what he was saying, the scene was over in both movies, especially this one. And he doesn't come back. And he doesn't come back. So I thought it would have been nice, and especially him being an OG, an icon of horror, I think that they kind of missed out on that opportunity to have more of Tony Todd in it in some way, shape, or form, you know, but you know, that that's all I got with that one. Um, Mr. Bones saying uh, Tony Todd should have been in, them all, in all of them. A absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I agree. Uh, Anthony saying, I see logger trucks on the road a lot where I live in North Carolina. Every time I see one, I do think of this movie. It's crazy. Everyone does. <laughs> Everyone does. <Man. laughs> but after they see Tony Todd and he tells them, you've got to read the signs. Um, only new life uh, can prevent death and all of that type of stuff so they you know it was a little bit of a wrinkle um in the whole uh game plan which was interesting for this movie because you you think you know what to expect but they put a little bit of a wrinkle and coriander the next scene was with tim tim and nora at the dentist this made me cringe a lot oh, even before the death okay yes, what, tell me I tell me what anything. you thought of this coriander yeah like not much makes me you know squeamish or Ew, but anything with <laughs> dentist and teeth so and don't watch the dentist then if you can't do exactly. it. Exactly. Like, don't do it. Don't yeah, watch I've that seen one. it and I, it's tough. <laughs> that is a tough fucking watch. That Corbin Burnson, damn it. But yeah. I mean, it was crazy because those damn pigeons kept flying into the window. Yes, and yes. he's got a fucking needle and he's like jumping the doctor and it was like, "Oh my god, this It was kid. kind of funny the doctor's reaction. He's like, "God damn pigeons." Yeah, cuz it's <laughs> right? I mean, you're trying to do, you know, mouth surgery or whatever on this poor kid and Right. Yeah, to be interrupted. Just like a cavity, that. luckily. Just a cavity. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Right. But still, he's got a drill and mm -hmm. give him a shot and freak that. I'm glad it didn't go as bad as it could have been. I, you know, like it could have almost gone like his pants, out like he said. Scene. And like the whole time, I'm just like, please don't do this to me. Please don't do this. Yeah. To me. <laughs> I thought it was so I funny too, it. right? <laughs> yeah, when he goes into the before the you know to go into sit down and he's like, if my pants are unbuttoned. You know, then. Oh, my God. <laughs> We're not paying. Yeah, he was funny. Yeah, it was something like that. Yeah, It was funny. But, you know, they yeah. saw, um, Kimberly saw the, the premonition of pigeons in the reflection of a window. And that's when she realized, hey, we got to go and, uh, you know, save Tim. He's going to be attacked by pigeons. So when you saw the pigeons hitting the window a couple of times, I kept thinking something's going to happen with the pigeons mm -hmm. right there. Or when one got in and they showed Tim's mother, Nora, yeah. trying to capture mm -hmm. it, I was thinking it's, it's going to do you know, something. That pigeon her. saved her. Yeah, because she would have got electrocuted if that pigeon mm -hmm. didn't come in when it did. Right, yeah. right. And then worse than that is when that um, overhead, when one of those uh, plastic you know, goldfish or whatever yeah. was coming off of the string and went into Tim's yeah. mouth and he's suffocating basically. And I'm like, yeah. this is horrendous. Cause and he was, why he would was... you put something like that over someone who has their <laughs> oh, Death is crazy. everywhere. 
right now, man, something could happen. But and, not you know, only that's... that, it's going to collect dust, you know? So oh, the come dust on. is a valid point. <laughs> so I guess this Wait is a like minute. a just PSA. Don't, don't put mobiles above your babies. I know it's a thing, but right. they might fall apart and choke right. on them. Right, right. Not only that, but it's throwing dust down on them. And that's not good either. <laughs> oh wow okay so look so tim avoids that right he gets out he's coming out of the building i'll throw it to you angela did you have any idea it was gonna go like it went because kim and and the officer got there in time mm-hmm. and they're yelling at at tim and nora the birds, you know, watch it. The yeah. birds. oh my god uh, it's right? the most pitiful death ever mm-hmm I didn't see it playing out the way it did, but as it happened, I was like, I've, I've seen it cited as one of the top 10 worst deaths in any horror movie. And I'm like, oh my God, now that I've seen this whole sequence play out, like I will support that being on any list. It was so <laughs> lackluster, just kind of like pigeon that he's like, Ugh, like a mm. three-year-old and then he's gone. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. I just, I mean, it was rough, man. Cause he's a kid. And I mean, the but way it was, it was so shown. so cluster compared to all the other deaths in this True. movie and the last one. It was just. But it was it, quick, it, though. That's right. the thing with these really. And maybe really... that's the lackluster part. Yeah. But it crushed the hell out of him. I was like. Yeah, it did. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, it did. This is a good it's... picture for this segment, by the way. I just want to kudos your picture choice. <laughs> It's all by ch- I would like to take credit, but it's all by chance, Angela. <laughs> it is. It truly is. But yeah, his poor mother was right there. And, uh, you know, this, you know, is a pretty, you know, basic horror movie. But obviously, you know, having a little bit of the, you know, moments and she was just totally torn apart by it. But yeah, they how also. Could you not? Oh, Holy no, no, shit, I agree. If I saw... That would be. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I could fucking imagine. No, that's what I'm saying, though, is that I think her reaction to it and just the, the acting that mm-hmm. she did from that oh, point on, good. I think, was mm-hmm. very good and actually gave the movie a little bit of, um, you know, it, it classed up the joint, so to speak, for the movie. You know what I'm saying? Um, Agree. But, yeah. But, you know, they figure out this whole idea of the pregnant lady that was on the off ramp and they come up with the idea that she if she gives birth to her right. child according to what Tony Todd said, that that will invalidate the list because it's new life um, to basically counter counteract the death. So that was kind of an interesting um, little tidbit. But the bottom line is, and this was for me anyways, where I had a lot of fun with the movie is because they all get together for a meeting and you see all of them coming to um, the officer's apartment or whatever. And you also see that funny scene in the elevator with this guy, this, this guy who just did not want to be in the same elevator with uh, Rory. And it was kind of funny, but mm-hmm. bottom line is um, they're having this meeting and there's a lot of denial, which, you know, I could kind of vibe with Eugene, you know, he was in denial. Nora was obviously heartbroken over her son dying and so forth. And Coriander, this leads up to what happened with Nora. What were you thinking oh. once she decides to leave and get on the elevator? Oh, you know, you felt bad for this woman because she even said, right? you know, I have nothing left. I lost my husband, mm. now my son. I need to go plan a funeral. Right. And yeah, and it's crazy because obviously the druggy dude, I can't remember his name, but he's like in the right. closet knocking shit over and they get a sign yeah. of a man with hooks. And yes. then you see her go in the elevator and yeah, this There's was crazy cuz if you think about it, it was her fault. It was it was kind of an accident that the hooks grabbed her hair cuz she bent down to get the phone. Right. And when she came up her hair got caught oh, yeah, on that he's hook. So creepy. This picture he was is creepy. Yeah. creepy. The he ultimate was. creep. Yeah. And the fact Freaking that, creep. yeah, she got, <laughs> her head got, she got decapitated. Yeah. yeah that man, was a pretty shit. brutal death. It was, was man. Awesome. And it was really bad because she was trying to, 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 to get unhooked. She gets caught in, in the elevator. And then you had the scene where Clear and Cat come on either side of her to try to and help her, her move, yeah. lifting her. And she even yeah. said, I think this was the saddest part, and I know it's just a movie, but she said, I don't want to die. And I was like, oh, God, this yeah. poor lady. And yeah. she just she just gets 
crushed right there. Like yeah. it was just, yeah. But I, um, I did. Oh, that line was a really brilliant line for her. Yeah, like it just nailed her character even more to like a legitimate person. Yeah, who's been through all this trauma, and usually at that point you're like, I kind of just I'm done. And she's like, yeah. No, I don't. I'm facing death, and I'm not ready. Right. Just I agree. that little detail really sold her character even more. Yeah, no, I think she was a very good character in the movie. Um, and I, I really did feel bad for her. I truly did. But, you know, I think at this point, everybody's just so emotionally just on edge, like super on edge. And you got Eugene, he's like freaking out. He grabs the officer's gun, puts it up to his head, talking about he's going to choose when he goes out. You know, nobody else is in control. And Coriander, I'll let, I'll let you take this scene, but he he shoots. He, he pulls the trigger not once, yeah. not twice, not three times, but six times, and they're all duds. What you, would you think of that scene? <laughs> Again, if it's not your time, obviously you're not going to go. That was right. crazy because I was even thinking, shit, okay, maybe the guy didn't load his gun. And I'm thinking, that's kind of smart. But then mm -hmm. when he flipped it open and there were bullets mm -hmm. there, you're like, holy shit. He, right. he got right. really freaking lucky. Yeah. I mean, it was hitting home the whole idea that Clear was trying to get across is like, it wasn't your turn. You know, death has not come yeah. for you yet. You, you're going in order, you know, of the way that you should have died. Um, yep. it's, it's a creepy concept, man. This series <laughs> is pretty good. Uh, let me catch up to the chat for a second here, too. Uh, Neil was saying, considering how bad the last couple were, Tony Todd probably just passed on them. <laughs> huh. I don't know, man. It may be, maybe. Um, Jinjin is just saying those arms on that death scene. Yeah, man, right? Absolutely. Uh, Logan's in the chat saying, sup? What's up, Logan? How you doing, man? Nice to have you in the chat. Um, yeah, it was it was pretty crazy. But this obviously leads us into the last third of the movie. And it also makes a nice little bridge uh, to the first movie. And Angela, I'll, I'll, I'll throw it to you. They're all in the car and the SUV driving the survivors. You've got Rory, you've mm -hmm. got Kat, you've got Kim, you've got Clear. Um, and also Eugene, and they're talking about their connection with Flight 180. And I thought this was actually a very cool scene um, to really make that bridge. What did you think of this scene, how they talked about how they were linked to the Flight 180 survivors? I was like, thank God, I finally know why they were chosen. Because I'm like, it doesn't, <laughs> when it first starts off, I'm like, we don't know any of these people. How do they fit into it? Right. So I really like how they took the desk plan for the plane and they made it bigger because it's like the butterfly effect. You yes. change one thing and it has this cascading effect into other people's lives that you don't even know just because of who you've influenced. So I really like that they pulled it out, that these people were supposed to die within the past year and didn't just because of the flight. Mm. Brilliant yeah. tie in, brilliant spin off to keep the series going. Yeah. It was I great. I keep saying brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> what'd, you, what'd, you, what'd you think of it, Coriander? I, like I said, it really, it caught me too. What'd you think of it? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a great concept and, you know, it, it fits well and yeah i really yeah that's all i gotta really say <laughs> yeah i mean but each of them it was just interesting because like like um eugene was saying that how he was supposed to be a substitute teacher but got called to another school because of mrs luton from the first movie and uh the officer he was the one uh, that came and cleaned up Billy, Billy at the uh, railroad tracks and this and that. And, and uh, his... But one thing, though, it's almost like almost with Halloween. I'm sorry I interrupted you. That's it's right. almost like with the whole brother sister thing, though. For me, I don't really think that it was needed that you had to have a connection with Flight 180. You know what I mean? Or with any anybody, because fate, mm -hmm. no matter what, can get you. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So. I, well, I think they just did it just to have, you know, some link to the first movie to, to kind of show just like, like uh, Claire was saying, you know, that ripple effect, you know, that, and, and it is true. I mean, death, you know, if, 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 if an, if an event is avoided like that, you know, it can affect 
multiple p- people. So I think they were just doing that to give a little bit extra weight, you know, into the series. At that point, I don't know if they were planning for a part three, but they definitely yeah. were hoping that this movie was going to do as well as the first, which which it did. It did pretty well. So I don't know, you know. But yeah, it works crazy because. Can I just tell you, uh, in high school, when I was a senior in high school, the friend that passed away in the car accident was like a couple of years after we graduated. When mm. she was on a bike on a campus, she got hit by a bus. She broke her leg. Wow. Yeah. And she like, she was lucky that she survived. And the fact that wow. she died in a car accident a few years later, that is fucked up shit. And I always think of Final these fucking destination, movies. IRL. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Mm. That's yeah. crazy. Uh, Logan was saying, uh, not much up being lazy today. My church shut down over COVID-19. Hearing about Final Destination is a good filler. Well, that's good, man. I'm glad that you're enjoying it. We're enjoying talking about it. Um, Neil said, now that I think about it, most of my favorite deaths are in this one. There were some good ones in here. There really was. Yeah. Anthony's saying a little late on Tony Todd, but if, you, if you've never seen Star Trek DS9 episode The Visitor, he's in it and he will break your heart. The man mm-hmm. is a master. He truly is. Mm-hmm. He really nice. is. Uh, Logan saying Tony Todd having a smaller part in the new Candyman was terrible. Yeah, that's that's a whole nother story. It was a bummer. It really is. It was a bummer. But I still enjoyed that movie so much. I love yes. that movie. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Me too. And I've hopefully... been reading Fingoria's July issue, which has a whole bunch of articles, and I'm like, I want to rewatch it so bad. Yeah, no, it was fantastic. And hopefully, yeah. you know, because we can hopefully have another movie, and who knows, you know, who knows. But um, so they're in the SUV. We find out what they've got, you know, as far as a bridge to the 180 survivors in the first movie. And then, of course, they have their little yeah. car mishap. And uh, Kat's trying to keep control of the vehicle, and that's not working out too well. And they come into this, like, field, this farm, and that pipe goes right through the back of the SUV and almost kills everyone. Um, but everyone is is okay, except for Eugene. He's having trouble breathing, and they think he has a collapsed lung, so they get him out of the SUV, and they're trying to get everyone together. And then you got Rory, who saved uh, the kid's life because he right. almost got hit. Yeah. And right. it, it, I guess what I want to say is that this scene started to boom, boom, boom. It was like moving quick. You know what I'm saying? And I think it was kind yeah. of, um, Two for it was, one. yeah, it was really, really As good. And Ninja says, yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Um, so I'll start with you, Coriander, you know, first of all, just, you can tell, talk about any death in this farm scene that you want. I'll let you talk about one and we'll let Angela talk about one. Cause it was crazy what was going on. Yeah, I mean, this poor girl cat there, her leg, mm-hmm. she's stuck, you know, because this log went through her door. Right. And you have the fire, you know, the fire guy who's, you know, <laughs> using the jaws of life to try to get the door open. Yep. And who would have thought that, a, you know, when he banged that door, yeah. her airbag went out, you know, mm-hmm. went forth and smashed her head into that pipe and killed her. Yeah. It was so quick. It was like, oh, my gosh. And he even so made light of it. Yeah, it was so un- unexpected because she was. she was like, you know, can you be a little Quiet quieter down. with that? And he's like, right. oh, yeah, I'll put it on quiet mode. You know, he had a little jerky type of moment. And as soon yeah. as he and hit he the door. Swang. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was, was rough. It was crazy. Yeah. Absolutely. And, Angela, what did you think of uh, Rory's moment, which was little – God, man. <laughs> this right. entire, like, the the last death, like, cluster is what I'll call it. And then this one all happened so fast. But everything just, like, domino affected that you didn't see it coming. Mm-hmm. Like, you, you saw the little details and you didn't know how it was going to play out. But you weren't right. expecting death to get so many people. Yes. Um, Rory was my least favorite character in this one. So mm-hmm. his death didn't really like matter to me. I don't know if that's weird. No, I know what you mean. But it also one. happened so fast that didn't. There wasn't a lot of time to process it, other than oh shit, oh right. fuck, we are left now. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yep. I agree. It was quick. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was so quick. You know, like even even for uh, Kimberly and, and Clear, they were just like 
what what you know because they were no so one worried was about paying eugene. attention to rory between exactly. eugene and cat which cats mm -hmm. is my favorite death of this one i do have to clarify all-time favorite death of this yeah. one um yeah. it just everybody's focusing on what's going on that no one's caring about rory which was actually mm -hmm. kind of like the entire movie so far he's just kind of been in the background he's mm -hmm. the druggie no one really yeah. like takes him seriously so for him to die alone that way was slightly tragic if you think about it in the grand scheme mm -hmm. of his character but mm -hmm. also it fit it worked yeah. yeah, he he yeah. did have that moment with Kimberly though when yes. he gave her his wallet, and he yeah, was for like, his mom. "Hey, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, get rid of my porn and my drugs, yes. you know." Yeah. <laughs> so that was kind of anything nice. my mom's yeah. gonna be upset about. Just get yeah. rid of it. Do her. A but he did seem, but 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 to be serious about it though, he did seem like he was he was really trying to be more. Um, I don't know what the word is more sympathetic or whatever, but he just seemed mm -hmm. different in that moment. Like he was the most different in that one little oh, scene yes. of like 30 seconds of dialogue, maybe not even 30 seconds of dialogue, but for that small bit of time, I actually felt bad for the guy because it's almost like he knew he was going to die, that there was no yeah, hope. Definitely. I think he's, I think he saw mm -hmm. everything that was happening and he just knew he was, was going to die that, and yeah, he was accepting it. Comment. And yeah, he just man. saved the kid, too. That's the thing, too. Mm -hmm. He saved the kid. So it's not like he was a jackass. He was just a druggie, you know, who just, you know, did his own but thing. It's a social commentary, in my opinion, on people who have drug addictions and the, the negative stigma the world's placed on them. That's a good point. That's a good mm -hmm. point. So, yeah, I mean, like for him, you know, he it wasn't he wasn't a bad guy. You know, I mean, he literally saved that kid's life. You know, and he could have right. he could have gotten killed doing it. You know, here's this guy that's been trying to, quote unquote, cheat death, you know, a second time. And he sees this kid that's about to die and he risks his own life to save the kid. So, you know, um, and his death was a good one. I mean, come on. He he gets sliced in half. You see intestines. Like, and... like in three. This is true. It flies yeah. everywhere. Like in it's threes. like you slow it down just a little bit for the effect. And then... Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Neil saying an airbag just might not save your life, right? Yeah. And this, and I think that was such a yeah. ir so ironic, you know. Yeah. Uh, we got uh, cheers to fears in the chat. What's going on, guys? Nice to have you. Mm -hmm. Saying that scene with the barbed wire is one of my favorite deaths in the franchise. I literally laughed out loud the first time seeing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it just happened so damn fast. You just weren't ready for it. You know what I'm saying? But let's get to the finale here you know they get eugene to the hospital and we see death is working hard mm -hmm. trying to take eugene yeah. out stuff it's is shutting two down for one, right cords. eugene's kind of like a stud man he's like he, no no the, the cords are coming out of the sockets and mm -hmm. everything is shutting down and you know the the idea was that the pregnant lady was going to give birth and it was going to all be done and they were waiting on that she gives birth. Kimberly and Burke are so happy. They're like, yay, we did it. Clear is happy. And then she looks into Eugene's room, and all of a sudden, the vents open up, the gas was leaking, mm -hmm. and then the firebomb happens. And, and when I first saw this, I was like, are you serious? Like, Clear's going to die like that? It was just, it just hit me, you know, because I really enjoyed her character. She's she was lucky a returning she made character. It this long. Well, I know she that. She over a year. That's exhausting. I know. I know. I'm just saying. It, I didn't expect it. You know, it just it just hit me because you know when you, yeah, and when you first watch the movie, you mm -hmm. do believe in that theory that if if uh, she gives birth to the child, everything's going to be okay. But anyways, but Coriander, how did you think that that scene played out for you? I mean, yeah. Who would have thought that Claire was going to go? You know, and right once, yeah, and once Kimberly figured out that holy shit, this pregnant lady wasn't even supposed to die, so this baby yes. really didn't save shit. Good I point. mean, then she goes and figures out that it was me that you know I have to die. Yeah, right. all these visions. We didn't even touch on her visions. Yeah. She's been having yeah. visions the entire time, guys. Yeah, A she did have the visions of of the yeah, van driving off into the water, mm -hmm. and she was thinking that it was mm -hmm. is the. I think she, I don't know if she said, she didn't say it was the pregnant lady though. She just saw someone she, in the van. Right? She did at one point. She right. assumed it was the pregnant lady because the pregnant lady was driving a white van that day. 
right, right, she drives okay. a white yep. van in general. So she yep. assumed the white van was there. Mm -hmm. So thinking that if they can get her to the hospital, yeah, you're right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Because that was the point of why they had her also that locked up. Safe. So she, yes, yeah. to keep her away from the roads. But oh, yeah, that was so unethical. Can we touch on how unethical it was to put like basically <laughs> a PV on this pregnant lady who was completely innocent and didn't do anything? <laughs> Go ahead. What do you think? Hey. Way to think about it. Way to think outside the box, but also so questionable. <laughs> right? Movie logic, right? Movie logic. Movie logic. <laughs> this shit will get you fired in the real world, but let's go movie logic. Right. Absolutely. But hey, yes. you could be a criminal and pregnant. You know, who knows? That van mm -hmm. could have been stolen. You know what I mean? No, well, that's true too, I guess. Yeah. But <laughs> the bottom line is that Kimberly realizes that um she sees this thing on the on the wall on a bulletin board talking about a man who drowned and had a second chance at life and so forth. Mm -hmm. So she puts two and two together and realizes that she has to drive the van into the water and has to drown and be brought back to life by that doctor that she kept seeing in her vision, the one that was uh, supposed to deliver the baby, but the baby was delivered anyways. But anyways, that was a rough scene, man, because anytime I see a drowning, I get really freaked out. Because the whole idea of drowning is creepy as shit to me. What did you guys think of it? And obviously, um, afterwards, I'll start with you, Coriander. I mean, yeah, who to think of drowning? I mean, that's that is right? a scary way to go. Honestly, I would right? I would hate to go that way. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> when you see her supposedly taking her last breath and. Yes. You see the cop trying to save her and smash the window and yeah, yeah you tried. don't know what's going to happen. He did and yeah. thank God he like knew what she was doing when she ran out of that hospital to get into that ambulance to drive it into right. that lake because if he didn't do that, she would have died. Right. And she I wouldn't have the been brought back open to life. for him in that moment either. Like, right. Death is like, yeah. no, she's mine. Oh, you're next. Definitely. Absolutely, yeah. right? But Angela, I mean, he obviously saved her and, and brought her back and the doctor was able to resuscitate her. So, um, you know, she made it and she saved mm -hmm. the day and they think that that's it. But we have a it's stinger a at movie. the end. It's a horror oh my movie. God. I love the, the ending part. <laughs> yeah. What you, th would you think of the I ending, Angela? so hard. Oh, my God. When the kid explodes because he was supposed to die and didn't die because yes. Rory saved him. And That's he explodes right. and yeah. the arm just lands on the plate like it's the barbecue. I was like, oh, my God. Yes. I, yeah. I was like, yeah, this is a great way to end it. And that's yeah. it. That's it. I thought it was a good Love way it. to end it. It was a good stinger. And and again, it just made you, And you know, I remember when I first saw this and I had that same feeling of, oh my God, I forgot the kid was in the equation too, because Rory intervened. Mm -hmm. So uh, and it's this the movie was- the premise of this movie. The, yeah. You were in the original group and now you're part of the new group. Exactly. So it was just, like I said, this movie was really good. I think it was a very good sequel, and it like upped the stakes. And um, yeah, I've always had a good time with this one. It's 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 a good one. Um, Coriander, I'll start with you as we finish up. But any final thoughts on it? No pun intended. <laughs> it's a fun one. It's got some great okay. deaths, and yeah, yeah, it's enjoyable. Okay, all right, you Angela. I don't think I've seen any of the other ones, so these are all going to be new to me. I oh, hope cool. they don't go with a saw route where it just gets so ridiculous or like completely inconceivable. So I'm at that point in a horror franchise where I'm nervous where they're going to go with it. I so think that's I th my thoughts. It'll be interesting to see what you think. I think there was mm -hmm. some 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 still some good stuff going on. I enjoyed. You know? Yeah, have I enjoyed a roller coaster all death thing to me and i'm just like i don't know i don't know what you're talking about yeah right yeah the next one will be fun but yeah we'll be doing uh final destination three um next week so that'll be fun to talk about um so mm -hmm. definitely for you guys that are in the chat or watching the replay definitely um join us for that one but on this video please give us a like that would help support the channel thumbs up. and um uh, yeah a thumbs up and also mm -hmm. Leave us a comment in the comment section. Let us know what you think of the movie. What's your favorite death? Uh, what do you think of some of the things we talked about? And uh, we can have a conversation there. And as we head on out, Neil was saying Allie Lauder should have been in all of them. <laughs>
<laughs> Mr. Bone saying the end scene was great. Mm -hmm. I think so too. And he also says you will enjoy them morbid. They all have great deaths. Yeah. They really yeah. do. Neil saying, Angela, I hate to tell you. Ha ha. I know, don't. I'm nervous. I'm uh, excited. It'll be fun. Be, but I'm also see, like, yeah, don't listen to what other people say. Yeah. You'll be okay. Yeah. But, anyways, yeah. guys, we got to head on out here. So, we will catch mm -hmm. you guys later. If you're watching this, if you're listening to this, you are the Night Watch. Peace out, guys. Okay. It did something weird and said I was muted, and now I'm not muted. I know, yeah. I don't know if okay. we're still on. Yeah. Can she um, oh, it says we're still live. Hi, everybody. If you can hear us, you're all <laughs> fabulous. Thank you. Um, it does say you're still yeah. live on the YouTubies. Yeah, his, he's getting something to fix it. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, man. Oh, and we lost night. Hello, everybody. We are preemptively working on Final Destination 3. You're in the future. Greetings. Oh, no. I'm going to, like, back out of here. So I've, I'm going to leave. I'll see you later. <laughs> Bye. Thank you.